Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hi. Hello. Hello. Okay, we are going to start with this module. Vamos a comenzar con este módulo. I know that uh, we are like pre-intermediate, so we are going to um, try to use more English than Spanish in this course because we need to um, practice uh, the uh, acquisition of the language and also we are going to practice the production of the uh, the language. So in this case, we are going to um, have, a, we can say like 50 and 50 of English, or I think a, like 75% uh, of the a production of the language. And we are going to solve some uh, adapts uh, or some uh, things in Spanish, but it is like, um, we're just going to have that, um, the language in a less amount in this whole course. So the first thing that we are going to do right now is to make a little, in, in, I'm going to present myself in this case, we are not going like, to have that presentation and we are going to introduce ourselves and all the things, but I am going to, good evening. Uh, good evening. I'm going to good introduce evening. myself. And in this case, my name is Elena Chavarria and I am in charge of this course. So we are going to work these four weeks, um, learning something new, practicing and doing some exercises and working on the platform. So we are going to have a lot of things to do in these um, four weeks. We know that we have like a very short time, but we are going to try to um, complete all the topics, all the information and all the activities that we have for this course. So it is a pleasure to be here today with you and also working with um, you in this course. So we're going to begin and I um, just uh, want to tell you that I like to work in um, online documents. So I'm uh, going to show you in which document we are going to work in this course. Eh, vamos a utilizar algunas, um, vamos a hacer como pequeños feedbacks en Spanish. Vamos a hacer como esos pequeños eh, momentos en los que vamos a explicar algunas cuantas cosas en español, pero vamos a tratar de mantenerlo lo más inglés posible. Um, Primero, mi nombre es Elena Chavarría, yo estoy a cargo del curso, vamos a, a estar trabajando en estas cuatro semanas, eh, tratando de, de resolver las actividades de la plataforma junto con los temas que vamos a estar desarrollando. Vamos a tratar de ir desarrollando los temas y también de ir trabajando con la plataforma en las sesiones, para que ustedes no se vayan a atrasar con su trabajo en la plataforma. Eh, second one. Eh, a mí me gusta trabajar con documentos en línea. No les voy a mandar documentos de Word, ni PDFs, ni nada por el estilo. I'm just a work with documents online porque es mucho más cómodo para ustedes, eh, ya que yo les mando un solo enlace en las cuatro semanas y ustedes van a poder accesar a ese documento en cualquier momento, a cualquier hora, y la información se va a ir actualizando inmediatamente. Así que eh, el documento va a estar disponible incluso después del curso para que ustedes puedan accesar a él. So I'm going to show you what is the document that I am talking about. And in this case, I like also to share with you some eh, motivational phrases. Eh, me gusta eh, mostrarle como frases de motivación o cosas así, pero es una frase a la semana. So we are just going to have four different phrases during this um, course. Solo van a ser cuatro frases de este tipo en, la, en el curso, pero es solo para iniciar la semana. So the uh, first phrase that we have here is, 
train your mind to see something good in every day. We know that life can be very hard for us sometimes, and we can think that things um, don't have like a solution, but we need to train our minds to see something good in every day. Uh, maybe we can think about uh, the people that is around us, our family, if we have um, children, we can think about our children. Uh, we can think about our mom or dad or sister, brother. Even we can think about our pets that are part of our family. Um, also for something that you like. I don't know, different things that we can um, think that help us to imagine something uh, good to make us feel better with the situation that we are living in that moment. So don't just focus on bad things. You can focus on good things also. Eh, si tenemos eh, situaciones un poco complicadas o malas, tenemos que buscar una pequeña, um, podemos decir, una pequeña motivación en esas situaciones. A veces son situaciones muy difíciles, pero también tenemos que ayudarnos un poco eh, entrenando nuestra mente para ver algo bueno todos los días. No les voy a decir que la situación va a mejorar de golpe, pero sí puede ayudarnos un poco con el estrés que vivimos todos los días. So, we are going to begin. Este es el documento. This is the first page that you are going to see. Um, then we are going to work in all of the pages that we can create on that document. Um, at the beginning of the session, you are just going to have the topic or the objective of the topic or the objective of the session. And then we are going to develop the whole thing in that space. And you are going to find all that information in that document every day. Así que vamos a tener el tema, el objetivo, y se va a ir desarrollando nuestro tema a partir de ese, de ese objetivo, de esa um, página que vamos a crear en el documento. Y ahí ustedes van a ir viendo la información. Pueden irla viendo en el momento, ¿verdad? Ustedes pueden accesar. Solo que este documento se va a enviar hasta el día jueves. Vamos a tratar de tener los cuatro días completos para que ustedes ya vayan viendo ahí la información. So, we are going to begin with the first topic because we know that we have just one hour eh, to complete the topics. We are going to develop two different topics that are not like very different, but we are going to use one topic to develop two different ideas. Vamos a desarrollar dos, um, dos temas. Podemos llamarlo, vamos a desarrollar dos temas, pero en realidad eh, hay un tema base, that is a base topic, that we are going to use to develop all these activities. And also we are going to um, complete one knowledge check of the platform. Vamos a tratar de completar estas dos partes de nuestros temas y también vamos a tratar de completar un knowledge check de la plataforma. Así que vamos a estar pendientes ahí para que ustedes también vayan desarrollando sus knowledge check o vayan tomando apuntes del de knowledge check y lo vayan contestando despacio. So, we have a question here, but first we have our objective. In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about how often they do an activity. We're going to talk about how often. So in this case, you know um, which kind of topic that we can develop and we're going to see the second one. The second one is related to adverse of frequency. Quiere decir que vamos a utilizar adverse of frequency as the a main topic. Nuestro tema principal son los adverse of frequency. And depending on that topic, we are going to develop these two parts. But first, we have this question. How often do you exercise? 
qué tan seguido hacen ejercicio o qué tan seguido se ejercitan. First, I want to uh, see some of your opinions about this question. You know that we have different adverbs, tenemos diferentes adverbios, y ustedes pueden utilizar el adverbio que mejor eh, le acomode a qué tan seguido usted hace ejercicio. So, the first activity, or the first thing that we are going to do, is to write on the chat. We are going to write on the chat first, and then we are going to produce in the other uh, session. Vamos a iniciar primero escribiendo. Vamos a ir primero desarrollando la escritura and then we are going to develop the speaking part. So don't worry, we are going to produce in a speaking way. Vamos a hacer primero, eh, ustedes me van a contestar esa pregunta. How often do you exercise? ¿Qué tan seguido ustedes se ejercitan? I always, I never, I sometimes, or, or we can use just sometimes, mm -hmm. I. Um, I usually... Ah, sí. I rarely ever, which um, advert that you want. Lo vamos a escribir, vamos a hacer una pequeña oración, la vamos a escribir en la cajita del chat, y yo voy a ir escribiendo sus oraciones under the image. I'm going to give you like four minutes, cuatro minutos para que piensen en su oración, la vayan colocando y cuando estemos listos, que ya tengamos varias eh, oraciones, las voy a ir escribiendo en el documento. So, 8.15, we are going to see all the statements. 8.15, todas las oraciones. And then we are going to um, listen the conversation. So, let's go. statements that you are writing on the chat. I have some um, statements, so thank you for your participation. And I'm going to make like a list of um, 
phrases that you are using here eh, using the adverbs. Vamos a comenzar con la lista. So I'm going to do it like this. Okay, let's begin from the first one. I usually exercise in the week. I usually exercise. And week. Next one, I never exercise. Next one, I usually exercise three times on the week. Mm, okay. I usually exercise three times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, it says, I usually do exercise five days a week. We can um, reduce that amount of words and we can use, I usually exercise from Monday to Friday. We can do it like this. I usually exercise from Monday to Friday. Next one, I never exercise again. So I'm not going to write again the same statement. Es para no repetir. That's why I'm not going to write the same statement. Uh, again, I exercise from Monday to Friday. I hardly ever exercise. I hardly ever exercise. I usually exercise on weekend. I usually exercise on weekends. I exercise twice a week. In this case, I'm going to add um, adverb because we don't have an adverb in this statement, but I think it's always. So I'm going to add, I always exercise twice a week. I never exercise again. Let me see, I exercise one a week, once a week. I exercise once a week. Um, let's see, sometimes I exercise, sometimes I exercise. And uh, I don't exercise very often. Okay. I don't exercise very often. Um, every week, usually. Uh, usually two times a week. Let me see, twice, twice. Then we have twice. I usually exercise twice a week. I'm training three times a week. I like to play football. In this case, I'm going to use always because maybe it's something that you do every week. Um, I always, um, we're going to use exercise three times a week. I like to play 
football on a weekend. Very good. I never do exercise again. I make ex I mean I mean I exercise three times per week. We have already some statements. I never do exercise. I exercise sometimes. Sometimes I exercise that we have something related to that statement. I exercise sometimes. In the past, I did exercise all day. I never do exercise. I almost always, okay, this one. I almost always exercise. Okay, very good. Thank you. So we have different statements and we are using different adverbs um, to express um, how many um, we can say the quantity of the things that we are doing during the week. In this case, we are talking about the exercise. So we have uh, some people that usually exercise in the week. Uh, we have people that never exercise, um, maybe three times a week, uh, hardly ever. Um, always someone or, uh, that is always exercising uh, during the week. Um, we have sometimes, almost always, different expressions. So we are going to listen and read the conversation that we have on the platform that is related with this topic. How often do you exercise? And then we are going to, um, we can say, we can make an analysis about the things that they are uh, saying on that conversation. Remember that all the information that we are gaining through these courses, we are going to use um, that information, that vocabulary, that uh, structures. We are going to apply them in a specific conversation during our daily life. Estas conversaciones nacen de la mezcla de todo la información o de toda la información que estamos absorbiendo, que estamos ganando durante estas, um, estos cursos, ¿verdad? Este, estos tiempos. Entonces, esto que estamos haciendo lo tenemos que aplicar en conversaciones. Um, we can say like very casual conversations, conversaciones casuales que podemos tener con nuestros amigos, con nuestros familiares, en un día común y corriente. It is not like we are going to make a lot big effort to make a conversation with someone. Um, this is like you are drinking a coffee or you are drinking water or you are buying something and you find someone and you begin talking with that person. So you are making a conversation using this kind of information. But let me stop this one and I'm going to go to the platform. So we're going to see um, a video in which we have the conversation. So we are going to listen also the pronunciation of the words. That is the first video on the platform. So let me go there because I am looking for. And the conversation, it's called, I hardly ever exercise. Like in the last uh, statement. I'm going to Teacher. tell me. I have a question. Tell me. Um, and no es, se lo voy a decir en español, no yeah. es necesario el auxiliar do en las oraciones que nosotros escribimos. En este caso, cuando estamos contestando, no es tan necesario. Um, cuando hacemos preguntas, sí. Ahí lo van a ver en la conversación que vamos a ver ahorita porque tenemos varias preguntas que dice, do you exercise a lot? O tenemos, eh, por ejemplo, hay otra pregunta por acá. How often do you exercise? Ahí sí vamos a utilizar más que todo el auxiliar do, pero para contestar, mmm, no, porque estamos utilizando también los adverbios. Así que no es tan necesario que utilicemos el auxiliar do en nuestra respuesta. En el caso de que la pregunta sea, eh, do you exercise a lot? Y la respuesta sea sencilla, Yes, I do. Ahí sí simplemente utilizamos el auxiliar do. Pero si vamos a agregar más información, no es necesario que utilicemos el auxiliar do. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to share with you the video in which we are going to listen that conversation. So we are here and I'm going to show you this conversation. But I think I don't have the volume up. So give me a second like this. Okay, this is a conversation I hardly ever exercise. Exercise. You're really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? Well, I almost always get up early, and I lift weights for an hour. Seriously? Sure. And then I often go inline skating. Wow. How often do you exercise like that? About five times a week. What about you? Oh, I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. I guess I'm a real couch potato. Okay, we have the conversation here. And if you can see, uh, we don't use the auxiliary in that case. But it's uh, the different kind of a structure that we use. I'm going to go to the uh, document in which I have the conversation, just the image, not the video. And we are going to like um, make an analysis about the information that we have in that conversation. So in this case, we have this um, conversation between two different people. We have Mary and we have Paul. In this case, Mary is um, like admiring uh, Paul and also she is asking some questions. Uh, in the first uh, statement, she said, you are really fit. You are really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? Es como que está, se nota que está muy ejercitado, ¿verdad? Y le pregunta si hace mucho ejercicio. And he is answering, well, I almost always get up early and I lift weights for an hour. Él casi siempre, almost always, se, él casi siempre se levanta temprano y levanta pesas, ¿verdad? Él levanta pesas por una hora. And she says, seriously? Es como, en serio? ¿De verdad es eso? Sure. And then I often go in line skating. Él, él se va a hacer su uh, patinaje, ¿verdad? Es ese patinaje, así como lo pueden ver en la imagen. No es patinaje sobre hielo, sino ese tipo de, de patinaje con ese tipo de, eh, um, de patines y de eh, utilería, ¿verdad? So, Maybe she, uh, he's doing on the street or something like that. Um, wow, how often do you exercise like that? ¿Qué tan seguido haces ese tipo de ejercicio? About five times a week. What about you? Él dice que cinco días a la semana o cinco veces a la semana. Um, y le pregunta sobre ella. ¿Qué pasa contigo? ¿Haces ejercicio? No, that's the question. Oh, I hardly ever exercise. Yo casi nunca me ejercito. Así como viene la, la respuesta, ¿verdad? I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. Yo usualmente veo la, te la televisión en mi tiempo libre. I guess I am a real coach potato. But what is a coach potato? Who knows that meaning? Who have ever listened to that a specific expression? ¿Quién había escuchado esa expresión de a real coach potato? Me, teacher. Tell me, what is the, the meaning? It's a Aragán. Ah, es una persona floja, ¿verdad? Floja. Perezosa, yes. So, she is saying that she is a coach Potato. Para los que nunca habían escuchado esa frase, coach potato son personas flojas, araganas, como dicen ustedes, o perezosas, ¿verdad? Coach potato. Alguien que no está muy interesado en esto del ejercicio, ¿no? So, now we are going to make a review. Vamos a hacer un pequeño um, review of the topic because I know that you have a lot of information about the adverb of frequency. Um, 
no es un tema que no hayamos visto antes, este es un tema que ya seguramente ustedes ya lo vieron con anterioridad, but we are going to make a review. We are going to uh, say some things about the adverb of frequency, and we are going to say uh, the different words that we can use for this topic, and at the end, we are going to um, develop the exercise. Vamos a hacer el review del tema de eh, los adverbs of frequency. Al finalizar, vamos a ir a la plataforma a resolver el ejercicio que tenemos ahí. So, um, I know that you have um, a lot of information about this topic, so we are going just to make a very short review. Es un review corto del tema, so don't worry. So, the topic is adverb of frequency, que tiene que ver con el primer tema que ya estamos eh, Viendo, básicamente es un tema muy relacionado. What is the objective? It says, by the end of this session, you will learn how to ask and answer questions using adverbs of frequency. We are going to learn how to ask and answer questions using adverbs of frequency. And on the conversation, we have two different questions. Así que ya vieron dos preguntas por ahí en la conversación con los adverbs. So, vamos por ahí, ¿verdad? Ese es el camino que vamos buscando, las preguntas. But we are going to make our review first. So, the first thing is that we need to know that the adverbs of frequency tell us how often something happens or is the case. Um, or maybe it's going to happen in the future. But the thing is, the most important thing is to know how often something happens. Que tan seguido pasa una acción. That is the thing, very simple. But I'm going to write here this information. Adverb of frequency tell us how often Something happens. Que tan seguido pasa algo, ¿verdad? Easy as that. And we have some example of the adverbs. And I'm going to show you some example of these words. And we have always. That is like the most common word that we can use. And we have an example, Peter always, uh, I mean, Peter is always getting, we are using the, uh, this structure, into trouble. I mean, it is not working. Mm. Okay. Peter is always getting into trouble. Peter está siempre metiéndose en problemas. Next one. Usually. Esa es otra que es bastante usada. Usually, and we have the example. They usually get their work done on time. They usually get their work done on time. Ellos usualmente tienen su trabajo hecho a tiempo. Then, frequently. Frecuentemente. It is not like very common, but we can use it. And we have the statement, my sister frequently goes shopping in Seattle. Mi hermana frecuentemente va de compras a Seattle. And this one rarely, raramente. They rarely ask questions about the homework. Ellos raramente hacen preguntas acerca de, los, de las tareas. 
So we're going to see here, these are just some examples. Now we are going to see what are the most common adverb of frequency, but also we are going to see what are the most common adverb of frequency in order from most often to least often. Vamos a ver los más usados a los menos usados. Así que vamos a hacer una pequeña lista para ver cuál es el que usamos más, cuál utilizamos más a la hora de hacer nuestras oraciones y vamos a ir bajando, ¿verdad? Cuáles son los que menos utilizamos o que sean menos, eh, uh, we can say like, um, because we are talking about the amount of um, time that we spend doing something. So we are going to see the most time that we expend doing an activity and the less time we expend doing something. Vamos a buscar palabras que utilizamos más uh, para referirnos a eh, cuando hacemos más una actividad y vamos a ir bajando a cuando menos hacemos una actividad. So, we are going to see most common adverbs of frequency. Vamos a comenzar con el de siempre, always. Es el que más, ¿verdad? Y nos habla de que pasamos más tiempo haciendo algo con esto. Always. And we have an example. He always does his homework. Aquí estamos utilizando el does. Se fijan, ahí vamos agregando el does. Pero va luego de nuestro adverb in this case. Y es porque uh, básicamente el you is the action, is the main verb in this uh, statement. Ese es nuestro verbo ahí. Está haciendo. And in the other one, exercise is the action itself. Usually. They usually complete the work on time. Often, I often watch movies online. Then we have sometimes. Jack sometimes comes over for dinner. Then we have occasionally. She occasionally. Ask a question. Really? Like this. They really have any homework. And the last one, and never. I never complain at work. In this case, we can say like, this person really likes their work. Because in some cases, we can complain about the things that we are doing during the day. Maybe we are too tired to do something. So we have here, aquí tenemos nuestra escala de eh, cuando más hacemos una acción a ¿ah? cuando menos hacemos una acción. Always, siempre. He always does his homework. Él siempre hace su tarea. Usually, usualmente. They usually complete the work on time. Ellos usualmente, ¿verdad? Eh, ah, completan su trabajo a tiempo. No siempre, pero usualmente lo hacen. Often, ah, we can say like, 
it is not all the time, but we are in the in the uh, way. I often watch movies online. Then sometimes, Jack sometimes come up for dinner. Not all the time, just sometimes. She occasionally asks a question. It is not like very common to hear that girl asking a question. They rarely have any homework. Why? We don't know, but they don't have a homework some a days. And I never complain at work. Never in my life. Nunca me quejo de mi trabajo. That is something mm, kind of weird. So we have the examples of the adverb of frequency and some uh, statements. If you can see something um, that is like, um, something that happens in all of these statements is that you are using the adverb of frequency next to the pronoun. Aquí el adverbio lo vamos a poner justo después de el pronombre o el nombre. Casi siempre va a ir en esa posición. ¿Por qué casi siempre? Porque el sometimes a veces se puede utilizar al inicio de una oración y no simplemente después del pronombre. Pero en muchos de los casos vamos a utilizar el adverb of frequency después del pronombre o del de nombre propio. So, where do they appear in the sentence? Hasta I said. It, the word order can be confusing sometimes with the adverb of frequency, and we have some different rules. First, in a sentence with one verb, we have different uh, kind of uh, statements, and depending on that statement, we are going to place the adverb in that uh, specific uh, place of the sentence. Tenemos diferentes tipos de oraciones, y dependiendo de esas oraciones, de cómo estén construidas, así vamos a colocar nuestro adverb. Si tenemos oraciones con un verbo, we are going to use that adverb in the middle of the sentence, after the subject and before the verb. Vamos a colocar, en este caso, el adverbio en el medio de la oración, después del sujeto y antes del verbo. O sea, va a ir en medio de esos dos. And if we have the verb to be, si tenemos el verbo to be, usualmente va a ir después del verbo to be. Así como, por ejemplo, Tom is often late. Tom is casi siempre, o we don't know, different kind of uh, adverbs. Then if, um, if we are using short answers in this case, Si tenemos respuestas cortas, no se aplica de esa manera. Porque si tenemos una pregunta, that is the thing that we need to know, the question. We have this question. Is she usually, is she usually on time? ¿Cómo vamos a responder nosotros esta pregunta? Mm, we are going to use, um, tell her not to be late. Dile que no esté tarde. Pero estamos utilizando un adverbio. Is she usually on time? Maybe. Yes. She is. Esta es nuestra respuesta. Yes. She usually is. Entonces aquí podemos construir. Vamos a ponerlo a la par para que no sea un poco, no sea tan confuso. Is she usually on time? Tell her not to be late. Dile que no venga tarde. Yes, she usually is. Sí, ella usualmente es ta tarde. Así es como se responde, ¿verdad? Nada más, simple así. O podemos poner, she never is. No, ella nunca viene tarde. I mean, never, no, never. Like this. Así podemos responder a ese tipo de preguntas. Very simple. We are going to see the questions. Vamos a enfocarnos más en las preguntas ahora. Questions. 
Ya vimos el ejemplo, ahora vamos a ver más o menos la estructura, cómo se aplica. When we are using adverb of frequency in the question form, put the adverb before the main verb. Put the adverb before the main verb. And we have the structure. Vamos a ver cuál es la estructura. We have the following thing. Auxiliary verb plus the subject plus the adverb, aquí está posicionado el adverbio, plus the main verb, plus the complement, and the question mark. I mean the other one. Así, esa es la estructura que vamos a utilizar con nuestra pregunta. Vamos a utilizar un verbo auxiliar, el sujeto, el adverbio, el verbo principal, el complemento y la question mark. Y vamos a ver unos cuantos ejemplos. So, we're going to see this one and it's at the first example. Do you often go to the cinema? Do you often go to the cinema? Did he sometimes, did he sometimes leave the classroom? And do they usually come late to class? In this case, when you are using these questions, never, seldom, and rarely, uh, another in another adverb of frequency with a negative sense are not usually used in question form. Las, eh, los adverbios que tengan una connotación negativa, así como lo es never, seldom, and rarely, y otros que tengan connotaciones negativas, de que pues básicamente sean los, los más bajos de eh, qué tan uh, qué tanto hacemos una actividad. O sea, los que están más bajitos no se van a utilizar en pregunta. ¿Se pueden utilizar? Sí. No hay una regla que diga que no. Pero no es tan común utilizarlos en preguntas. Es mejor no utilizarlos y utilizar palabras con connotaciones positivas. So in that case, it's not like uh, we are going to use that kind of adverbs in, in, in questions, but we are going to do it like uh, with words that have a positive connotation of this um, kind of adverbs. So I'm going to write this last one exception. And I think we have enough time to do the, the exercise on the platform. Aquí está la excepción. Never, seldom, rarely, Ok, that is the exception. No es que no se pueda, sino que es, no es muy común utilizarlo. 
E igual, si tenemos oraciones negativas, um, the most common thing is to use uh, adverbs with a positive statement. I mean, with a positive uh, connotation. It is not like you are going to use negative statement with negative uh, adverbs. Si vamos a utilizar oraciones negativas, vamos a hacer oraciones negativas. Um, lo más común es utilizar adverbs que tengan como una connotación positiva y no una connotación negativa, porque estaríamos cargando mucho nuestra oración de como de cosas negativas. Entonces, sería como demasiada negatividad de nuestra oración, así que no es muy común utilizar igual. Never, seldom, rarely, and all of that kind of adverbs with a negative uh, statement. We can use it with um, simple or positive statements, but not with negative uh, statements. In that case is when we are using the don't, doesn't, didn't, and all of that um, expression. So you need to keep in mind that you can do it, but it is not like something that all people do. Así que no es agregarle más negatividad, sino que pues, um, sería como demasiado negativo al hacer una oración negativa con adverbios que sean con una connotación negativa. So let me go to the platform and we are going to see what is the, um, the first knowledge check that we have there. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10, 10 different statements. And we're going to choose. Let me share with you the screen. Este es el primer ejercicio que tenemos en la plataforma, así que vamos poniendo ahí nuestros apuntes por ahí para ir respondiendo luego en la plataforma. So we are going to read the, the following prompts. And we are going to choose the response in which the adverb in brackets is placed correctly. Vamos a leer los puntos. Vamos a escoger la respuesta en donde los adverbios se encuentren en la posición correcta. Voy a ponerles, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can do it like a very short, give me a second. I'm going to have at least three. Yes, like this. Que se vean tres en la pantalla. Vamos a ver. We have three different prompts. Number one, do you play sports? And we have the, um, the adverb in brackets, ever. Sure, I play soccer twice a week. And number three, what do you do on Saturday morning? Usually. Vamos a pensar cuál es la pregunta correcta, o sea, dónde está posicionado correctamente el adverbio. Les voy a dar dos minutos, no mucho, y me van dando sus respuestas. Las vamos a ir marcando. Son diez, así que tenemos que hacerlo en dos minutos, tres, seis y cuatro al final. Así que dos minutos, decidimos cuál es la correcta, marcamos, pasamos a las siguientes tres. Okay, we have one, um, okay, two. Do you ever play sports? Tenemos por acá, luego tenemos en la número dos. Sure, I play soccer twice a week. Sure, I play soccer twice a week. And number three. En el número tres, ¿cuál sería la correcta? Number one, number two, or number three? What do you do on Saturday morning?
Okay, someone said number one. Number three. Number one, it says, okay, we are going to see number one. Okay, next one. Vamos a la siguiente tres. Number four, number five, and number six. But I need the question here. Nothing much. I sleep until noon. Do you do aerobics at the gym? And no, I do aerobics. What are the uh, correct placement of the adverbs? Okay, we have someone here. Number two. Number two again. Okay. Number one. Number one. Okay. Someone else. Number one. What do you think in the number four? In the number four. Uno o dos. Uno o dos. Número dos. Ok. Number five, someone, someone said. En la número cinco, someone said number two. Do you often do, ok, number two, number two. Next one, number six. Someone said number three. No, I hardly ever do aerobics. What do you think? Number one. No, uh, uh, I mean, no, I do hardly ever aerobics. Number three, number three, number three. Again, number three. Okay, very good. Vamos a ver las siguientes tres. Because we are almost done with the time. Number seven, eight, and nine. Do you exercise on Sundays? No, I exercise on Sundays. And what do you do after class? I have uh, an answer already. Two answers, good. One, okay. Number eight. Number eight is number two. Number eight is one. Someone said it's one. Number three. Mm, number two. Number two again. Nine. Okay, nine is number one. Someone said it's number one. What do you think in the number nine? One, okay. Okay, very good. And the last one, number 10. I go out with my classmates. One, two, and three. Okay, I think we have number one. Ah, number three. Let's see. Okay, number three, number three. Good. We're going to see what are the correct answers. Vamos a ver cuáles son las respuestas correctas. Let's see. Oh, wow. All of them are correct. Todas ellas están correctas. Así que solo hacemos el pequeño review para los que están tomando notas. Number one is uh, option number one. 
Number two, option number three. Number three, option one. Number four, option two. Number five, option two. Number six, option three. Number seven, option one. Number eight, option two. Number nine, option one. And the last one, number 10, option three. So there is um, our first knowledge check. Ese es nuestro primer knowledge check. Ahí ya completamos el primero de la plataforma para que ustedes también vayan trabajando en eso. So it's time to end the session. We are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other on uh, the next session that is tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.